What's going on, Pokemon fans? I'm Professor K for the Pokemon Evolutionaries, and it is time for another PSA submission video. Now, you guys are probably wondering, wait a minute, you just sent off PSA a month ago. Where's the return? Well, for those of you who don't understand uh, how PSA works or have never done it before, there is actually quite a bit of a wait if you choose to do it the cheapest option. It's usually somewhere between 30 to 50 business days before you actually see them back. So it's going to be a little bit before they start to trickle in. So we may uh, get off uh, this submission and maybe even one more before we actually see the results of our first one. But then after that, we'll be seeing a monthly results and a monthly submission video. So that being said, we're going to send off again with Ludkin's collectibles. We're going to shoot off a second round just to see what happens. And let's go ahead and show you guys what we have in store for our send off this month. Now, first, I'm going to start off with our Japanese cards. Of course, why would I not send off this? Greninja Break. Of course I would. Japanese Greninja Break. This thing is pretty darn mint, if you ask me. I really don't expect to get any worse than a 9 on this thing. Uh, it got pulled and put immediately into a sleeve, so I'm definitely going to say that this will get a 9. This is from Best of XY. It's something we actually pulled ourselves, which is pretty cool. So this one's going to be heading off to PSA for this month. Next up, we have a Japanese Hollow here. This is from the Gym Series, and this is Rockets Zapdos. Now, I've had this card for a little while now, and it is in really, really good shape. Again, I don't think this card is going to be any worse than a 9. There's no edge wear on the front at all, um, and on the back as well. The back is very, very clean. I'm not concerned about the condition of it. Um, again, I think it's going to get a 9 or a 10. Japanese cards do so well with PSA that uh, I'm pretty confident in this one. And we have a little bit of a connection surprise with this one. You'll see this one here in just a little bit. Next up, we're going to send off this Full Art Shauna that we pulled out of one of our Best of XY Booster boxes. So we're going to see how this one does. Full Art Trainers always do well as far as PSA goes um, and resale value and all that good stuff because they're hard to pull. They're actually secret rares in Japanese. So it's always cool to see that. And not to mention Full Art Trainers are always, always, always collected. So we got Shauna and we also have Delinquent as well. So we got two Full Art Japanese Trainers we're going to send off from Best of XY. Three of these cards are actually from Best of XY, so we're going to hope that we get high grades on these because they are freshly pulled and were put immediately into sleeves. So I have a high hopes for these three. I think actually we pulled all three of these, the Greninja, the Shauna, and the Delinquent. So we'll see how it goes, but again, I don't expect to get any worse than a nine on these three. All right, haha, -ha. there it is. Right off the bat, you guys see the connection. So I'm sending off an English and also a Japanese just to see who does better. Overall, I think the English one will be worth a little bit more uh, just because the English cards have always been very iffy on their quality control. So it's much harder to get an English high grade than it is to get a Japanese high grade. That's why a lot of people grade Japanese because you can almost depend on Japanese grades to be pretty high right out of the pack, whereas with English cards, the quality control is not nearly as prevalent, so a lot of times you find you get a worse grade. So if I get a 9 on both of these, I will be thrilled. If we get a 10 and a 9, I'll be even more thrilled. And if we get a 10 and a 10, I will be shocked out of my mind. But this is a really good candidate for it. It's very clean. The hollow pattern has no scratches at all that I can see. Uh, the back was very clean as well. But again, I don't expect any better than a 9. Maybe an 8, just depending on how strict the person who's grading my PSA cards are actually going to be. Sometimes you get a generous one, sometimes you get one that's like, nope, one little nick, you get an eight. So it's hard to say how things are gonna go. The back's pretty clean, it's not perfect, but I don't expect it to be worse than an eight. So we'll see what we do on this one. Next up, this is from a very good buddy of mine, formerly known as Water and Grass, now known as a bit oddish, that is Jesse. I traded him for a couple of these cards you're gonna be seeing today, I believe. Um, actually, one of these, this was one of them, now that I think about it. Both of these were Needle King Base Set Hollow. This thing is really clean. Again, I don't see any scratches on the hollow foil whatsoever. There's a little bit of whiting on the back, but I don't expect that to be a major issue. Another thing with Wizards of the Coast promo, or Wizards of the Coast cards in general from this era, is that you'll get like a silvering on the borders. This does not have that. So that's actually pretty rare, and this card could be pretty valuable if it gets a 9 or a 10. Again, 8 I think is the minimum on all of these, but I would happily take an 8 or a 9 on this one just based off the age. I mean, you're looking at a card here that was printed in 1999. It's 18 years old. I mean, really, what do you expect for an 18-year-old card that's been sitting in a binder for years that, or a box or a pack or whatever the case is, 
just a long time to be there. So we'll just see how things go on this one. Yes, we are going to be sending off a second Double Colorless Energy Secret Rare. This one is pretty darn immaculate. Um, our last one I had high confidence in as well. This one I also have high confidence in. I feel like we're going to end up with two 10s, two 9s, a 9, or a 9 and a 10. I, I don't think this is going to be much worse than a 9. I, I don't even think it's possible to be worse than a 9. I pulled them myself, put them right in the sleeves, and they looked good out of the packs, which is really, really uncommon. Not to mention the centering on these is pretty solid. It's very well centered for this set and for an English card in general. It's another problem with English cards is they're not really centered perfectly most of the time. You get like miscuts where you got one side shorter than the other or the bottom is shorter than the top and then you see the major ones that actually show parts of other cards at the top. So very nice to see this one perfectly centered and also really really good condition as well. So double color synergy, we'll see how you do. Next up, We've got a secret rare Pikachu from black and white base. This one was printed back in 2011. Again, I just feel like black and white secret rares are very, very, very valuable. Um, as far as grading purposes go, maybe not the Pikachu and the Meowth nearly as much as some of the other ones with the gold bordering, but I feel like it's Pikachu, so why not give it a shot? It's really clean. It's got great edges. Um, it does appear to be just slightly off center. Uh, if that gets past the PSA, then I think we're pretty good. It's very slightly shorter on this side than it is on this side. We're talking like a millimeter of distance, basically. Depends on how harsh PSA is, because sometimes you get one that's good, sometimes you get one that's not. It all depends. So we're going to try it. We're going to see how it goes. Again, I expect a 9 on this one, maybe an 8 at the worst, but we're always shooting for 10s. So I try to be as strict as I can with my own personal grading, just because you never know. So there's our Pikachu for black and white base. This one I'm really, really excited about. This is a Rayquaza. This came from Neighbor Games, I believe. Um, I know it's Neighbor something. I believe it's Neighbor Games. I'm terrible with names. I'm sorry. That rhymed. Wow. <laughs> um, but he sent this to me, and I'm really excited to see how this one does. Call of Legends has some of the nicest looking cards, I think, pretty much all around. And these, these shiny legends are just phenomenal. And this Rayquaza as well, if this gets a high grade, I'm sure that this card will be very valuable and a very, very nice addition to my collection of PSA cards that I've just kind of started to do recently. Um, I've only sent off, this is my third time sending off to PSA ever, so we'll see how things go, but I'm gonna add it to my collection, hopefully as a nine or a 10. Uh, again, I expect it might come back as an eight, which I guess I'm okay with because it's still a really hard card to find and hard to get and even ungraded. This card is fairly expensive for the most part just because it's a shiny Rayquaza. So we're gonna hope for the best here when we send this off, but again, I think it'll get an eight or a nine. Finally, last but not least, the card that you saw in the thumbnail, Shining Charizard. Now, here's the thing about this one. <laughs> this is gonna be the worst grade that we get, probably by far, and there's a reason for that. I'm gonna see if I can get it to show up. I may not be able to, but I'm gonna try. Um, right across his back foot here, there is, there you can see it right there. There's a scratch that goes across there. It's, it's actually fairly deep. Um, it's not like going through the card. It doesn't show up on the back side of the card, but it is there and it definitely will hurt the grade severely, which is unfortunate, but it is still a shining Charizard. So even with a low grade, this is a pretty valuable card. Um, I expect this to probably get a five or a six and that's sad, but it's just the way it is with that scratch there. Um, I got a fairly good deal on it and I just feel like all Charizard should be graded regardless of their condition, especially if there's only like one minor flaw like that. The back is actually pretty solid. There's a couple of little nicks down here, like there's a white spot here, there's a white spot there. Uh, there's a little bit of voiding up here as well, but for the most part, a lot of this is actually inside of the uh, top loader, like this one here is, but that is definitely a nick. So there's a few nicks on the back and there's that gouge there. I feel like it's gonna come back a five, a six, and if we're really lucky, really, I mean like fantastically lucky, a seven, but again, I'm thinking more five or six. So we'll just have to see what PSA does with it. I'm really excited about this though, because I've never had a graded Shining Charizard of any value whatsoever. So it'd be really nice to see what this card can do for us. All right, so that is gonna do it for this month's submission. We should see this one back in, you know, two to three months, uh, depending. But our first one should be coming back probably within the next month or so. So we'll get to see our first taste of what PSA brings back from Ludkin's Collectibles. I do recommend them, by the way. They are very, very efficient. I'm telling you, like, 
my, he, he actually sends you, if you want, a pre-grade. He'll look at the cards. He's got 20 years of experience. This company has 20 years of experience doing PSA grading. He'll look at the card and determine what he thinks it's gonna get. And he's usually very, very close uh, from what I've seen from friends in the past. And I, you know, I feel like he's actually even a little bit harder than PSA, which is good because you're expecting a lower grade and you get something better, that's fantastic. That's actually the reason why one of the cards that I submitted last month, I decided not to grade. So you will not be seeing a grade on Scyther EX from Fire Red Leaf Green. Uh, that will not be happening at all, unfortunately. Um, so <laughs> it was going to come back, I think, like an eight. And I didn't really like that too much. So I said, don't even bother. Just send it back to me. So it'll be coming back ungraded. The rest of them, though, will be getting uh, hopefully nines and tens based off of his uh, his predictions. So again, I recommend them greatly. It's great to you know get that pre-grade just to know if your card is worth it or not. And if it's not, they send the card back to you for just an extra $2 uh, and, and they don't charge you for the grade. So if you pay for the grade and you say, okay, I don't want to get it graded, then you don't have to pay that full grading price. It's just $2 for them to look at it and send it back. So I think that's really, really nice. So that way you're not disappointed in a card that you think is going to get good. Anyways, all right, that's going to do it for today. Uh, there'll be a link in the description down below to Lickens Collectibles as well. And uh, hopefully we have some good luck with this. We'll see how things go, though, like I said. All right, thank you very, very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button, comment down below, subscribe for more TCG content, and look forward to more PSA submissions and PSA returns in the future for the channel. With that being said, guys, thank you for all of your love and support. We really do appreciate you guys for keeping the channel going for almost what, three and a half years now? Kind of crazy to think that, but we're heading towards three and a half years. We just want to thank you guys for everything you do for us. We really do appreciate you, and thanks for hanging in there with us all this time. All right, we'll see you guys next time. I'm Professor K for the Pokemon Evolutionaries. You all take care. Have a great day. For the best prices and service on Pokemon TCG singles and products, check out ccgcastle.com and use promo code EVOLUTIONARIES-5 for 5% off your next order.